It's great to be back in British Columbia, where I used to take my family vacations when I was a kid. Uh, I was raised uh, by two school teachers. We didn't have a ton of money, but we could always afford a road trip in the summer. And where else do Albertans go but to BC? Our favorite spot was the Okanagan. We used to get on that on the road and drive our way out and camp near Penticton. And, um, you know, it was in a tent, not in a fancy chalet. Uh, we weren't able to rent jet skis or motor boats, but we did have those fun little paddle boats and we did a lot of swimming. Campfires, roasted marshmallows and hot dogs. Those are great memories, good times that every Canadian should be entitled to enjoy, especially when they work hard. But unfortunately, after nine years of just inflation, of the, the federal government under the Liberals and NDP doubling the debt, printing $700 billion of cash, and piling on punishing carbon taxes, the vast majority of Canadians are struggling just to eat, heat, and house themselves. A vacation is not even in the cards. And when they show up at the pumps to gas up, if they do go on a family vacation, they're forced to pay $2 a litre here in British Columbia. It's not much better anywhere else. This is in part, of course, due to Trudeau's carbon tax, a tax that he and the NDP want to quadruple, quadruple to 61 cents a litre. They want to hike your gas price by 61 cents a litre. No wonder 2 million Canadians are stuck at food banks every single month. 8,000 have signed on to a Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network where they share tips on how to eat a meal out of a garbage can. No wonder 50, 15 to 20 percent of Canadians have gotten sick because they've eaten past due food having no choice due to the high price of groceries. After nine years of Trudeau, housing costs have doubled and Vancouver is now the third most overpriced housing market in the entire world. Worse than New York, Chicago, London, England, and even Singapore. Here in BC, it's impossible for families to ever afford a home because it requires more than 100% of the average family pre-tax income to make monthly payments on the average home, according to RBC. And 76% of youth who don't own homes believe they never will. Justin Trudeau and the NDP are not worth the cost, crime, and corruption. The good news is, life was not like this before Trudeau and the NDP, and it won't be like this after they're gone. Common sense conservatives will bring home a country where hard work pays off with a powerful paycheck and pension that buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. We will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. But in the next year and a half, Canadians are struggling and they are un unable to even afford a vacation. They need a break, for God's sakes. And that's why common sense conservatives are calling for an end to gas and diesel taxes from Victoria Day till Labor Day to give Canadians a summer break. We call on the Prime Minister to do this. It will reduce gas prices by 35 cents a litre, allowing families to get on the road and go off to their favourite campsite, maybe a cottage or a cabin, do some fishing, some hunting, or just get away for a weekend. Canadians need that now more than ever with how miserable things are going in this country of ours. It's a common sense step that the government could do. And if you wonder how we could pay for it, this Prime Minister is spending $21 billion on consultants. $21 billion. Money that could be in the pockets of Canadians. 100% increase on the money going to high-priced consultants like those that gave us the Arrive Scam scandal. Cut back on those consultants. Put the money back in the pockets of Canadians. Give Canadians a fuel tax holiday of 35 cents a litre from Victoria Day all the way to Labor Day. This is the least that we could do. 
And in the long run, we will bring back the country that we, that we knew and still love, a country where hard work pays off with powerful paychecks that buy affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods. That's the country we knew. That's the country we love. It's the country that we're going to bring home. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now have time for a few questions from the floor. Mr. Paglia, this is Neetu Garcha with Global National News. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you support the Liberals' proposed increase to the capital gains inclusion rate from one-half to two-thirds? The, um, there is no such increase. They have pulled that out of the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ethan Sawyer, CBC News. Uh, the Public Service Alliance of Canada has threatened a summer of discontent over having to go back to the office three full days a week. What do you think about this policy change? Do you think federal employees should be working in their office three days a week? And if I can get an answer in French as well. What I find interesting is that Trudeau's added 100,000 public servants. That's a 40% increase in the number of government workers, and he's delivering worse service. You can't get anyone on the phone at CRA. Incredible delays just to get a passport. And the federal government is not delivering any services that it wasn't del delivering before. In other words, after nine years of Trudeau, Canadians are paying more for bureaucracy to get less in service. On top of that, he's doubled the, the spending on outside consultants. This is the money that goes to the high-priced $2,000 a day individuals that gave us the Arrive Scam app. Uh, common sense conservatives believe public servants should be working for Canadians, that the work should be brought in-house at a lower cost, everyone should be working five days a week, and that it's clear that after nine years of Trudeau, he's not worth the cost. It's time for a government that delivers more for less, that delivers value for money. That is common sense. Now let's bring it home. Bob Mackin, uh, The Breaker News. Uh, you have made it your, your feelings clear about uh, lobbyists and uh, how you would approach lobbyists if you become prime minister. Will you back that up with laws, with, n with amendments to laws to stop the conflicts of interest that are happening, the unethical lobbying that, hap that happens, uh, the people that are basically selling access to the politicians. Uh, will you back that up with laws? And also wanted to find out what your feelings are about the federal spending so far on the FIFA World Cup, about $220 million spread between Vancouver and Toronto, which is just a drop in the bucket. There's going to be a lot more because the government has not announced what they're spending on security. So for, on your first point, yes, we already did. It was the conservative, the, the government of Stephen Harper that brought in the Accountability Act, which forced lobbyists to to register their interactions with politicians. So every time a lobbyist interacts with a politician or top bureaucrat, they have to register it. As a result of a law that I helped usher through the House of Commons in 2006 as the Parliamentary Secretary to the Treasury Board President, and I do think we need even stronger and clearer laws to stop the excess influence of uh, corporate lobbyists and other insiders. Um, and, um, you know, Justin Trudeau has found a number of loopholes in the Accountability Act. We need to close those loopholes to reduce the influence of lobbyists, of insiders, and give Canadians back control of their government. Um, as for spending on uh, uh, these sporting events, we need to protect taxpayers. Uh, you know, every time the Trudeau government uh, spends on anything, they go over budget, massively over budget. And then nobody's held accountable. The taxpayers pick up the tab. So I'm, I'm very hesitant to spend tax, tax their, taxpayers' money on anything other than the core services of roads, bridges, police, military, border security, and a safety net for those who can't provide for themselves. That's common sense. Let's bring it home. Thank you. This will be the final question. Yeah. Hi there, uh, <clears throat> David Brett, the New Westminster Times. Uh, we live in a time where the expression climate criminal is used to make the folks uh, driving their big trucks and cars behind you feel guilty and feel responsible for destroying the planet. What do you have to say to average Canadians who have to drive their cars, they have to drive their trucks, 
or, God forbid, work in the extractive industries uh, such as uh, fossil fuel and mining. Well, I think people who use that kind of incendiary language are just uh, trying to uh, intimidate taxpayers into taking more of their money. You know, I, we see this kind of really radical, extreme, and wacko language from the Trudeau liberals, where they attack people for driving automobiles, they say they want to ban roads. Uh, Catherine McKenna, I think, said that anyone who's against her carbon tax is an arsonist. Uh, so that's just an attempt to take more of your money and make you feel bad for wanting to, to, uh, to oppose them. Uh, and quite frankly, the people you see driving up these streets in, in pickup trucks, these are the plumbers that are clearing the pipes when, you're, uh, when your bathroom breaks at home. These are the people that are building the homes that you hope to live in one day. These are the people who fix the uh, electrical outage uh, when the lights go out. Uh, these are the working people who've been, frankly, screwed over by Trudeau and the NDP and the radical, uh, wacko agenda that they've imposed on them. Meanwhile, Trudeau and the NDP have no problem importing more products made by coal-burning dictatorships like China, which is responsible for the largest emissions of any country on planet Earth. They want to bring in more oil and gas from other foreign dictatorships, and they at the same time want to put our workers out of a job. Uh, this is disgraceful. It's time somebody stood up for our workers, our customers, and our families, and that's what I'm going to do. We will ax the tax. We will green light big resource projects to bring home production to the most environmentally responsible country on Earth. We will liquefy gas and send it over to Asia to shut down coal fire plants there, thereby reducing global emissions and replacing dirty foreign energy with clean Canadian energy. That is the right thing to do. It is the patriotic thing to do. Now, let's bring it home. Thank you very much.